You're the best thing that's ever happened to me, Lord. Amen. Galatians chapter 6 tonight. Galatians 6. We're going to pick up right where we left off, where I left off. <laughs> and uh, a couple weeks ago here, we were in this series for a long time now, but um, we're almost done with Galatians. And uh, we're going to begin to continue with Paul's teachings, of course, but we're going to just continue on with his books. We've got many, many lessons ahead here. Um, of course, half the New Testament, right, written by the Apostle Paul. Galatians chapter 6 tonight, we're going to relook into verse number 1. That's where we left off, and then I'm going to end up in verse number 5 tonight. But uh, you follow along as I read it. The Bible says here in Galatians 6, 1, Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual. Now, that's the key. That's what we've been on for the last several times. Ye which are spiritual. Not ye which think you're spiritual. Ye which are spiritual, okay? Uh, Restore such an one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. This is what we're going to talk about tonight. Bear ye one another's burdens. And so fulfill the law of Christ. For if a man think himself to be something when he is nothing, he deceiveth himself. But let every man prove his own work, and then shall he have rejoicing in himself alone and not in another. For every man shall bear his own burden. Let's pray. Father, tonight, bless the service, bless this message as we expound a little bit more on what a spiritual person looks like what they are behaving like, what they will be like. As we open this up a little bit more tonight, may you speak to our hearts tonight. Show us what you want tonight. Uh, have your perfect will and way. In Jesus' name, amen. I, last time I was up here, I had a orange and I had a banana. And I said, you will know the difference between these two because it's very evident that the one is a banana and that the one is an orange. Y'all remember that? Okay. And... Paul uses a list to describe in verse, uh, chapter number 5. You're, you're right there in chapter 6, but on the same page for some of the Bibles, on, maybe you have to turn back. But in chapter 5, verse number uh, 19 through 23, there's two different lists, all right? There is the uh, naughty list and there's the nice list, right? There is the, uh, the list of things that are, uh, that are evident that you're, you're operating in the flesh, Right? Uh, the works of the flesh, look at it, verse 19. The works of the flesh are manifest. They are, uh, they are seen as these. Here they are. Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, seditions, heresies, envies, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like. So that's a list, all right? Unfortunately, we find ourselves on sometimes. But it's a list of the flesh. It's a list of what you're operating in at that time. And by the way, let me remind you, you can't be operating in the flesh and the spirit at the same time. These two are contrary the one to the other. Okay? You're either full of the flesh or you're full of the spirit. You can't be half flesh, half spirit. You can't be three-quarter flesh, quarter spirit. you got to be all or one or all of the other. Are you with me tonight? And I didn't really get into all that teaching, but that's the truth. In verse number 22, however, is another list. And this is the list that I strive to be on. This is the list that in my life I, I work really hard to be on, and I don't find myself on that list a, a lot of times, but I really want to. And that is, but the fruit of the Spirit, look at verse 22, is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance. Boy, that's, that's a lot of good stuff right there. And, uh, boy, if we were just operating in that and not in that other list, it would be evident to all where, where we're at in our, in our Christian walk. But Paul laid the groundwork here for us. In fact, in verse number 14, he even goes on to say, look at verse number 14 in chapter 5, For all the law is fulfilled in one word, even in this, Thou shalt, what church? Love thy neighbor as thyself. Jesus would go on to say, By this Love shall all men know that you are my disciples. And by this love hang all the commandments and the prophets. And so love, of course, is the, is the key. And isn't it interesting, to me it's interesting, that love is the very first fruit. You know, we say give your first fruits, and that's the most important, right? The first fruits belong to the Lord, right? Are you with me? And tithing and all that. 
But notice the first fruit of the Spirit is love. So I just thought that was kind of an interesting correlation because I believe love is the key. In other words, it will be very evident that not only love is leading the way as you're operating in the Spirit, but there will also be joy. Amen? Joy. I know some people who aren't joyful. I don't mean you don't have times. I mean they're just downright cantankerous. They're about as joyful as the Grinch before he got his heart grown. I'm just saying. And I don't care how spiritual. I don't even care how much Bible knowledge that person knows. If they're walking around as a cantankerous grump, they are not operating in the spirit. That's what my Bible says. They're manifest. There will be joy. There will be love. There will be peace. America needs some of that. Long-suffering. I need that. That means putting up with somebody. Boy, how I need to put. That's why I got away. Got away so I wouldn't have to. I can long suffer y'all from California. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> You're saying, well, we could say with you. No. <laughs> Gentleness. Goodness. Faith. Right? Is your faith weak? All right. Meekness. Temperance. Of course, we learned all those. Now, the spiritual person will always be ready. Now, it goes right into chapter 6. Now, let's go back to review here real quick. Right into chapter 6, brethren, speaking to church, speaking to saved people. Okay, brethren or, and sister, amen. Uh, if a man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are? Now, what would they look like? Love, joy, peace, long, right? Okay, so those which are spiritual, they will be restorers. They will willingly and ably be able to restore others. What kind of others? Those that are taken in a fault, those that are struggling with a sin, those that are struggling with temptation to sin, spiritual people are restorers. Spiritual people are always ready and willing to help and to heal. And as Paul said, wow, that kid's got some lungs right there. Is that a kid? Oh, that's a siren. It's like, man, whose kid is that? All right, Lord, I hope they're okay wherever they're going. So we're either spiritual and we're restoring, listen to me, or we're fleshly and we're doing what chapter 5, verse number 15 says. Look at it. We're biting, we're devouring, and then we're consuming. Remember the hyenas? That's what we're acting like when we're in the flesh, okay? Now, the spiritual person is a restorer. We We told you that that means... They're menders. They're, they're, worried, they're, they're more concerned about mending than they are about anything else. They want to restore such and one like that. And then I said, number two, that, that not only uh, menders, but they're meek. Um, look what it says. Restore such and one, ch- uh, chapter 6, verse 1, in the... And by the way, meekness is also a fruit of the Spirit. You see that? And so they are spiritual... So they are restoring, they are menders, they are meek. Spiritual people do not just mend and send them away. Spiritual people approach them as hurting because they have the spirit of meekness. Spiritual people stick around after they have tried to help to mend. Why? So that they can recover them out of the snare of the devil. And I'm not going to have time to turn to this to open this up, but 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 24 through 26 tells you that the person, the servant of the Lord, who does meek things will want and desire to recover such an one and to deliver uh, so they, don't, they won't get destroyed by the devil. Okay, so you'll have to read that and find that. So spiritual people are restorers. They are menders. They're meek. And then I closed last week with verse number 1 at the end there. Look at the very end. After the spirit of meekness, it says what? Considering thyself, they're considering themselves, lest they also be tempted. Speaking of the spiritual person, they're, they're, they're considering themselves. What does that mean? That means they have placed a mark. So they're menders, they're meek, and they have placed a mark. What does that mean? A goal. They have set a goal in their life to reach what? A person that's going to mend. 
to reach the goal of being a mender, to reach the goal of having a spirit of meekness. Why? Consider in thyself, lest thou also be tempted. Tempted to what? Tempted to not be meek. <laughs> tempted to not restore. I, I don't want to deal with that. Not my problem. Come on now. How many times have we said that? That's not my problem. Well, it could be if you had the spirit of meekness. It could be if you were spiritual enough and you really wanted to mend somebody. Come on now. I'll give it to the preacher. That's his job. No, ye which are spiritual. Didn't say ye which are preachers. Come on now. So it signifies that this is what we should be doing. Mending, being meek, and then mark, having a mark that says, this is what I am. Not, not your own mark saying, this, look at me. No, this is what people know you as. That's the mark they see. Now, tonight's study, study is very simple. I'm going to do an illustration here. My men are going to get ready here that I've asked to help. And so please bear with me here as I, I haven't put all this together, laid it all out. So this will be the first time you are my guinea pigs tonight with this, all right? Another view of a spiritual person is not only is he a restorer, but notice verse number two. He is a bearer of burdens. Still in the context, if a man be overtaken, ye which are spiritual, and then it begins to say, bear ye one another's burdens. Why? Because that's what a spiritual person does. Bear ye one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. I want to look at two words tonight. I want you to look at the word bear. And that's not what your husband is when he wakes up in the morning. All right, he may sound like one and look like one, but he's not that kind of bear. It's, all right, this is a bear, and it means this, to lift, to endure, to sustain, to carry. Okay? The word bear there means to lift, to endure, to sustain, or to carry. Now, the word burdens, you see the word burdens in verse number 2? And then in verse number 5, there is another word, burden. When you read verse number 2, and then you read verse number 5, does it not sound like contradiction? For, for a long time, that's what I thought. As a new Christian, that's what I thought until I began to dig and ask. Because it says, bear ye one another's burdens, and then down there it says, every man shall bear his own burden. Wait a minute. What does that mean? I hope to explain that tonight. The word burdens in your first meaning in verse number, ter uh, verse number 2, it's two different words. In our English, it's the same word, but in the Greek, you understand it's not the same word. This was our Greek. This was written in Greek before it was written in English. And the word burdens here in this verse have two different meanings. The word bear one another's burdens, here's what it means. It's the word baros, all right, baros. It is in the Greek, it means a heavy, crushing load, all right? Or it means an abundance of weight. So it has, means that you are being crushed under some heavy object. Are you with me? We're going to illustrate that in a minute. This is a burden that we should all be working together to help to bear. Why? Because it says, bear ye one another's burdens. So bear ye, okay? Lift up, uh, help sustain somebody else's burden. Why? Because they're being crushed under it. Okay? Now... Give me a uh, Javier. Javier, come on up here. Well, actually, you know what? Abe, why don't you come up here? Javier, you're spared for the, mo for the moment. I'm going to illustrate. Stand right in front of the pulpit there. And I'm going to bring you your burden. You trust me, don't you? You trust me? All the way trust me? You do? All right. That's... Go ahead and lay down. Lay down this way so your head's, your head's this way. There you go. All right. He trusts me. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to crush him with this burden. Not literally. All right. <laughs> now, I, I didn't know what, how I was to illustrate it. I was going to get a big boulder, but I, you know, didn't want to bring that big old heavy thing in the church. Abe right now is being crushed with a burden, okay? He's being crushed with a burden, all right? And uh, life is just hitting him on all sides. You ever been there? May have had burdens, a bear, okay? And so the, the teaching here, stay with me. Abe, you okay? All right. 
He has gone. This is a man who has been crushed with burdens, the burden of grief, a loss of a loved one, a wayward loved one, a bad choice, and now paying the consequences. They're burdened. They're crushing. It's like a, a weight they cannot help and a weight they do not, cannot sustain themselves. They're under maybe some physical pain, some emotional pain. Something, somebody has wronged them, and it's crushing them down, and they can't get over it. Could be a financial burden. You lost your job. you got to feed your kids and pay your rent, pay your mortgage, a loss of things like that. They're being crushed by life's burdens. By the way, this can happen to all of us. And has happened and probably is currently happening right now. But the spiritual person, you still okay, Abe? Okay. The spiritual person, this is one who what? Has love, joy, right? Remember the list? Love, joy. Uh, it's uh, it's, it's, It's all because they love these people. They will be there to help bear their burdens, to lift it off, to help uh, sustain it, and to help to carry that load. Okay, now give, um, how about Noah and, um, Noah, can I get you there for a minute? Come on up here and um, Javier. These are sad illustrations of spiritual people, but I've got to pick somebody. (laughs) Ye which are spiritual. Now look at me. Here comes two spiritual men. Okay, they have, they have a brother. Okay, he's been taken in a fault. He's restored, but now he finds himself bearing burdens. Right? Whoever said the Christian life is easy? Right? Sometimes it's just a, it's, it's, it's crushing you down. But he's under his burden there. And though these guys go on one side of the table there, and you go on the other side, they're going to help him with his burden. Don't step on them. <laughs> All right, they're going to help bear. Another brother's burden, okay? Go ahead and just lift it up off him a little bit. All the way. Right there. Yeah, right there. How does that feel? Doesn't that feel better? <laughs> don't drop it on him, please. I don't want to go to the emergency room tonight with Abe, all right? Um, so the burden has been lifted. Exactly what the verse is implying here. Ye which are spiritual, okay? The spiritual, the, the non-spiritual ones, they're so, listen, They're so busy feeding their flesh, they're not concerned about him because they think they have the only problem. Where the the Bible says, I'm going to get to the other part here in a minute. The Bible says this guy's struggling. Ye which are spiritual need to help lift it up. Okay? Now go ahead and put it back down on very gently. All right. Noah, you can have a seat. You stay up here. Javier. Now, look at your second verse there. Verse number, or I'm sorry, the second burden. You can go ahead and have a seat. I'm going to call you up here in a minute. For every man. Now, so that, that is bearing one another's burdens. Are you with me? Very simple. But this, if you're not careful and you don't know the words, you can think it's contradictory. And you can say, there it is. Word of God has contradictions. That's why I don't believe it. And there's people out there that will use this verse. But they don't know that this is a different burden. For every man, look at verse 5, shall bear his own burden. But, but I'm helping him. Okay? The word burden in this verse is a total different word. And the Greek word is fortion, which comes from the Greek root word fortos, which means something to be carried, such as a task or a service. Now, remember... This burden, verse number two, was crushing him. Listen to me. He wasn't carrying it. Are you with me? He was, it was crushing him. He's not carrying it. He's not able to. So someone who is spiritual can come along and help him lift that burden. That's a spiritual person. That's the first burdens to bear. But here is the same, at the same time, we all have our own burdens that we must carry alone. I want you to go back here and grab one of those backpacks. Where's Jim and Steve? Go ahead and grab your back. I want you to grab uh, grab that. Sh- they're not heavy. Grab that short green one, the short green one. No, that short green one, yep. I want you to go ahead and put it on, strap it on your back. Steve, and uh, J- Steve, grab yours. I'll grab Paul's there. And- Paul, 
And then y'all come stand up here with me or right up here with a, you okay, Abe? (laughs) He's taking a snooze. He can get away with it. Okay, go ahead. Get it up there, Jim. (laughs) All right. Here's the meaning of this second one. When I was in the Navy, of course, these two guys were in the uh, Army. But when I was in the Navy, uh, they gave me this thing right here. Called, we call it a sea bag. Uh, he calls it a duffel bag. And that right there is called a backpack. And that right there is called, I just learned tonight, called a rucksack. Um, a rucksack. I know. I didn't know what it was either, and I was in the service. Um, but I wasn't in the Army. I was in the Navy, okay? There's total total difference there. But what it is, now, let me ask you a question, Jim, being in the, being in the military. Who packed your duffel bag for you? Me. Um, who carried your duffel bag for you? Me. You mean your CO didn't do it? What's wrong with him? You mean the weak guy didn't do it? You did it, right? Okay, same with you, Steve, right? That's correct. Right? And you don't even need to say yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. My point is this. Everybody has their own burden. Everybody is carrying around some sort of weight in their life, and, they, and they, have, they have loss, they have grief, they have pain, they have sufferings, and every one of us have a bag, okay? Some of, them, some of them are bigger, and they're invisible, of course. People don't see them, but they're there. And so we're carrying around these own burdens, and we have to carry our own, we have to pack our own, they come our own, and we must... Here it is. As we are bearing our own burdens, go ahead and go on the other side of the table there. You two guys go on this side. This guy, now wait a minute. Ye which are spiritual is the context, right? Ye which have love, joy, peace, long suffering, temp- you okay? Yeah. Temperance, goodness, meekness, right? These guys are, look, they're spiritual, but they have weights. They have some baggage. I'm not talking sin. I'm just talking life. Talking human pain and suffering and, and loss and grief and all those things we talked about. And, they're, and it's heavy already for them, okay? And, uh, and so they're bearing this burden. So they're bearing their own burdens. And God says this, while you're bearing your own burdens, I still want you to help bear one another's burdens. And so go ahead and bear your burden while you're helping another bear his. Help me. That's the Christian life. Are you with me? That's the Christian life. And by the way, the guy laying on the ground, he has a, a, a backpack on too. His, his, his got him, hey, his got the best of him, and he was crushed by it. You know anybody like that? Crushed. Maybe even suicidal. Maybe even to the point to where they're just going to end it all. They they can't handle it anymore. Ye which are spiritual, help that brother. You say, but I got my own. I know. Carry your own and his. Carry your own and his. You say, I can't do that. That's my last point. Y'all can y'all can sit down. Just put everything right here, except for that table. Can you put that back over there? Y'all can all have a seat. Thank you, Abe. Help you up. You're good. Thank you, gentlemen. Here's where you got help. Turn to Matthew chapter 11. Two things here in closing. Matthew chapter 11. You know where I'm going, right? Here's the thing as a child of God, that Jesus begs us to do. When we go through life carrying our own burden, we do that, and that's fine. That's the Christian life. But what really is the Christian life, and I I should have kept you up here to illustrate this, is that there are some things in your bag, in your backpack, that you shouldn't be carrying. You have chosen to carry that for whatever reason. And Jesus says, you cannot handle it. That's why you don't have rest. That's why you're not following my commands. That's why you're not happy. That's why you know joy. There's no, because you've got something back there that you need to lay on me. 
Look at Matthew chapter 11, verse number 28. Notice he says, come. You've got to come. Right? Isn't that how we get saved? We've got to come. We have to come to him to get saved. We just can't stay where we're at. We've got to make that first step of faith. Step out in the pew or step out of the aisle and step out of your pew and come to the altar. That's what we tell people. Why? So you can trust Christ. Now, you can trust Christ in your seat, but you still have to come in your heart. You still have to say, I, I come here, Lord Jesus. I'm, I'm here. I'm ready. So the same way he says, come unto me, all ye that and are crushed. You're just under it, man. And I will give you why? Take my yoke, he says, upon you, and learn of me, for I am, he's a lot meeker than we are, and lowly in heart, and ye shall find, that's what that young man needed, crushed. He may have been in a laying position, but he wasn't restful, not with the burdens pressing on him. Verse 30, for my yoke is, and my burden is, Amen. So while you're carrying your load, some things we just got to carry. We are to help others carry theirs. That's the spiritual person. And we understand that there are some things that we will never be able to carry. And we need to give that to him. What is the yoke tonight that you need to give to him so you're not carrying that heavy sack <laughs> on your back? Now go back, and we will close. We will close with this. Look, at, look back at our text. There's two things that come into play to where we will not do this. We will not follow God's plans here. We will not be spiritual enough. Two things get in the way. Actually, it's really one thing. Look at verse 3. Galatians 6, 3. Are you there? For if a man think himself to be something, what's that called? There you go. Pride gets us in the way saying, I don't need help. Pride gets in the way saying, I can handle this. No, you can't. They that think themselves to be something when he is, let me help you, you're worse than nothing. We're, we're nothing without him. We cannot carry it ourselves, especially those things that we're supposed to give to him. When he is nothing, he deceiveth himself. But let every man... Prove. That's the second word. So there's pride, there's pride and there's proving. Let a man prove his own work. The word prove there means to keep yourself on the examination table. Amen? You know, it's me. It's me. It's my burden. It's my problem. It's, it's not anybody else's, but they are there to help you lift your burdens. While you're carrying some of your own, but ultimately, we should cast them all upon him for he careth for you. He will sustain that burden. Let every man prove his own work, and then she, he shall have what? There comes the Spirit back. Fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, right? Have rejoicing in himself alone and not in another. For every man shall bear his own burden. There are some things, I guess you could put it this way. There are some burdens that we should share. There are some burdens that we must bear. And there are some burdens that we should just pass off in care <laughs> to him. I don't know, better way to say it like that, but that's the message tonight. Where are you at? Crushed underneath burdens, yes. We all have that. Are you a restorer? Are you bearing? Are you looking for someone with meekness or in the spirit of meekness yourself to help lift that burden? Or are you too busy with yourself? That's what a lot of Christians do. A lot of Christians, you know, they use that verse out of context. That's for me and my house. I'll worry about my own problems. That's not what church people are supposed to do. Spiritual people are looking around, seeing if they can restore. Spiritual people are looking around, seeing whose burdens they can bear. And they still have a big load on their back. But they're still doing what God wants them to do. That's the kind of church we need to be. Let's pray. Father, we love you tonight. Thank you for this truth. And, Lord, I pray that 
the illustration was vivid enough to understand the importance of it. 